Hey folks, this is Byron. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. Uh, I've had something on my mind. I'm actually just right now not even knowing whether or not I'll publish this particular um, recording or I'll maybe go on to something else. But what I've had on my mind is, is foundational teaching. And that comes from numerous dreams that I've had in which the Lord has shown me foundations were destroyed and wallowed out. Uh, up to including the latest, which a guy who is a foundations expert uh, appeared in one of my dreams. I didn't realize he was a foundation expert until after the dream and I looked him up. But he's a foundation expert for housing. But I know that when I saw it in my dream, it had to do with speaking because he handed me a set of uh, headphones with a microphone attached to it. So anyway, uh, there's some, some topics that's been going on in my mind. And right now what I wanted to focus on is walking in the spirit and <clears throat> Paul talks about walking in spirit Galatians also Ephesians let me pull up a verse here real quick just to get us to a reference point in, in Galatians 5 16 and also in Galatians 5 25 you read this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh then again in 525, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And this is based on the foundational teaching that uh, a Christian uh, who has the Holy Spirit within them can then also walk in the Spirit. And I wanted to use some things that I've seen in the Bible that go along with this just to expand one's or broaden one's horizon uh, as far as this. If we go all the way back to Genesis, and uh, we read in the Genesis account, I'm pulling this up as we do this, but <clears throat> in Genesis 8, I mean, excuse me, in Genesis 3, 8, uh, we see Adam and Eve were in the garden. They had taken of the tree, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and now they had basically sown uh, leaves together to try to hide themselves from God. And then appears this verse. It says in Genesis 3, 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So here it states the voice of the Lord God was walking in the garden and they heard it. So there is a reference to walking and voice. And in Acts, you see many times that the Holy Spirit speaks and, and causes people to do one thing and not do something else. But we know that no one has ever seen God. But we know that here in 3.8, it says that heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. The next appearance of walking, I think, that I want to mention is um, our walk. I should say uh, uh, the form of the root word walk, whether it's walking or walked, um, is walked with God. If you go to Genesis 5.22, you see that Enoch walked with God after he got Methuselah. 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And then again in, in 24, verse 24, it says that Enoch walked with God and he was no more, for God took him. You can say he was caught up. Uh, the Greek uh, word would be hapismo, not the English rapture. Realize that the English word rapture has the connotation uh, going along with the teaching of the rapture. Uh, it was specifically not used by the people that translated the New Testament from the Greek. Uh, I believe it was a, there was a reason there, and I believe it because the English word rapture has to do uh, with negative connotations. All right. The next time that we actually see something that, that we're talking about walked with God, it's not talking about um, physically God side by side with him, but it could be alluding to uh, the spirit moving, and also the voice, as we read about in Adam Eve. So <clears throat> Enoch walked with God. That could be Enoch maintained a conversation uh, with God for 300 years and begot 
No, he, he walked with God after he begot Methuselah, 300 years. And then uh, God took him. All right. The next thing we see is Noah. It says uh, in Genesis 6, 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just and perfect in his, Noah was just and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. That doesn't mean that God was physically present beside Noah. Because we know that no one has seen God. Let me get that verse for you. John 1.18 No man hath seen God at any time. And in, in 4.12 No man hath seen God at any time. Uh, there was a time when Moses saw the hinder parts, but he was unable to see God. So if you're walking with God, you are pretty much walking in the Spirit of God, or walking with the Spirit of God, or walking and listening to the voice of God. Now, what's important for us to understand how this applies to modern-day Christianity is the contrast of what is being taught to us and what the apostles said. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 4 and see what Paul said. Now, starting in Ephesians 4.20, we, I'm going to read the exact words of Paul. Uh, Again, if, if you want to read the whole verse or even listen to the whole chapter, um, I do have a Bible on my website. It's under the heading uh, Audio Bible. And you can go there and you can click Ephesians, scroll down to chapter 4, play the whole verse while you watch the text or, or while you look at the text. Or you can go to, um, <clears throat> you can just read the whole Bible if you want to. But here's what Paul said in Ephesians, to the Ephesians. He said, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation of man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I'm going to stop right there. That's not all that could be talked about in that particular section. It's a lot. Anytime Paul writes, there's a ton of stuff in one word. I'm telling you. But the point that I'm trying to emphasize is that the Apostle Paul said to the Ephesians, you haven't learned to follow Christ like these Gentiles do, which you mentioned just above that, and I didn't read it. But you haven't learned that if you have been taught by Christ and also you have heard him. So Paul's making reference to it should be pretty much normal. For people to hear the voice of the Lord, to hear Christ, to be taught by Christ, or hear from the Holy Spirit, be taught by the Holy Spirit, and to hear and walk would be parallel. So if we are walking in the Spirit, we're hearing from the Spirit. Uh, if we're walking with Christ, we're hearing from Christ. Um, and this kind of this teaching kind of gets into Trinity trinity teaching but in in essence god jehovah is god uh, he manifests himself in three ways one obviously is jehovah god but two is by christ the sacrifice for us the, the 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 god man who came to earth jesus christ and then three is in his spirit all the way back there in genesis 6 god said my spirit shall not always strive with man Meaning his spirit was always constantly wooing or trying to bring men to repentance and bring men into correct alignment. But he got frustrated back there in Genesis um, and, and it resulted in the flood. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that what I'm, what I'm saying may be um, a little foreign sounding, but not according to the scriptures. It's probably just foreign sounding to us because of who we've been listening to teach us. Now, there's another point in the New Testament. I'm going to go find that. Let me go find it, and then we'll talk about that. In 1 John 2, 27, he writes this. But the anointing, now to realize, when John wrote this letter, he wasn't writing to a specific person. He was writing it to Christians. And listen to what he says. He says, but the anointing which ye have received, and you could say the spirit that ye have received, the anointing that ye have received, the anointing in the spirit, it would all be synonymous. But the anointing that ye have received of him abideth in you. And you need that no man teach you, 
But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So you have scripture all over the Bible, all pointing to the same thing. One is hearing God, hearing the voice of God, walking in the garden, as the testimony is of the Adam and Eve story. Two is in it walking with God, and we know that no one has seen God. So we know that no that Enoch, even though he was walking with God, was was not seeing God. So he was walking, uh, perhaps, with the voice of God actively working with him, or the Spirit of God actively working on him. Same for Noah, walking with, and Noah walked with God. Um, Paul reiterates the same thing in Ephesians, and now John is reiterating the same thing. So. When we hear people say, I heard from the Lord, when we hear people say, the Spirit moved me, um, that is foreign to many, many people. And I can tell you specifically, it's foreign to most church people. But it is not foreign to the Bible. It is not foreign to the ways of Jehovah, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It is, in fact, what we could consider normal for people who have rendered themselves unto the Lord. So that's a little bit. There's tons more out there. You can't find contradictions that would tell you, oh, what Byron just said isn't true. The The words that I've just spoke, the things that I've just said didn't appear yesterday. They've appeared and been in effect for thousands and thousands of years, some of them older than others. But it's literally there. And when we begin to believe, you know, it's it's difficult to think for anyone. I don't care what kind of mental situation you're in. It's difficult to think that what you have learned up until a certain point isn't correct. But as you expose yourself to new information, you start realizing, wait a minute. And, and in fact, this is my testimony. Uh, I was robbed and cheated by the teachers, by the wolves. They did not say, Byron, you should, on a routine basis, hear from the Lord and be uh, moved by the Spirit of God. You know, it was contrary to that. I came from a place, man, if you tell them God gave you a dream, they'll think you're smoking dope or need to be on smoking dope or need to be on some kind of psychiatric treatment with pills involved. Uh, and that is definitely not the case. And, you know, when I say these things, you know, some people may think I'm stretching it. I'm telling you things that I've heard straight out of my mother's mouth, my sister's mouth. Uh, I've seen it in people's eyes like, oh, my gosh. And I've, I've witnessed it with other people, man, when like when I'm in church services. In like one church service, I heard this <clears throat> preacher. He said, I had a dream. And then he paused. And then as he, he left space in the pause there for people to react. And, and they did. And people started snickering. Not everybody, but some people started snickering. There I sat, having been filled up with dreams and visions and uh, words from the Lord, right there looking at these people like, Man, is this Captain Kangaroo or something? So anyway, uh, that is a teaching, a foundational teaching that one could, you would have to disbelieve the Bible to believe contrary to what I'm speaking here. Uh, a very foundational thing that we should expect to be occurring if, if we are right with God. Now, this leads us to another question. I won't cover it right within this section, but uh, it leads to another question. If it should be normal for me to hear from the Lord, if it should be normal for me to get things from the Lord and walk in the Spirit and things like that, the question should come up to anyone is, okay, if, if it should be that way and it's not, what's wrong? And I can tell you the, the problem is not with God. The problem is not with the Holy Spirit. The problem is not with Jesus Christ. And the problem is not with the Bible. The problem is something we have learned along the way that we believe in that is absolutely maybe incorrect. And it could be tied to faith. If you have come to the belief uh, that God doesn't speak, if you've come to the belief that uh, God uh will not instruct. If you've come to believe that there's no such thing as a dream from the Lord or a vision from the Lord or people that have those things are weird and whacked out, then you've also come to the belief that there's something that definitely 
is impeding your faith in the Lord's ability to do those things. And that could be the case. I'm not saying it is, but it very well could be. So I'm going to stop this one right here. I don't even know if I'm publishing this one or not. I don't know how good it sounds. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just something that's been on my mind, walking in the Spirit and how normal that should be. I mean, literally, it should be a daily matter. Uh, we will also, just in case you're concerned, we will get into the part where Paul talks about when we walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I'm telling you, people will say this very often to you. Uh, it's impossible not to sin. And I'm going to tell you, we have a fleshly body. Our fleshly body is corrupt. The Lord doesn't deliver us from this earthen vessel at the time of conversion, at the time the Spirit occupied. But you can't tell me that the Holy Spirit doesn't have power to conquer that flesh. Because he did it with Jesus Christ. He raised Christ from the dead. He has that type of power. So then we have to ask ourselves, well, if the Spirit, if walking in Spirit can uh, remedy me having this lust of the flesh, what is it that's preventing me from walking in the spirit? So anyway, these these things these things should just raise questions for us. Is why is my life not like it like it said it should be in the Bible? All right, thank you.